Hello, welcome to today's podcast. The topic for today is talking about pricing. Um, Diane and I are going to cover all things pricing related. Uh, I'm Louise. I'm Diane. And let's get going. Okay, so this is always a hot topic in all the forums and everything. We're always getting asked about pricing, people asking what other people charge, what should I charge for this? So we thought we'd have a, a podcast about it to share our thoughts on pricing. So One of the first things that often gets asked is people, well, it's not a question, it's usually a statement, isn't it, Louise, which is people won't pay more in my area or I can't charge that in my area. There's often that sort of, whether it's a mindset thing or just people's belief that their location matters when it comes to pricing. What do you think, Louise? So um, I didn't believe it was that important, but then I listened to people say that that much that I was like, do you know what? Come on, surely if enough people say it, it must be true. And then uh, similar to you, obviously, I do a lot of coaching and I was working with someone in a notorious area for having low prices. And they said, I cannot put my prices up. I cannot put my prices up. I was like, fine, okay, don't put your prices up. All right, maybe I'm starting to believe this. Anyway, they got to the stage where they went, I'm making no money. I'm closing the business down. I went, well, why don't you try putting your prices up? They put their prices up. They won a load of business. They decided to keep the business going. And I was like, so it does. People will pay it in that area. And they're like, yes, they will. I'm going to put my prices up for all my services. And I was like, so it isn't the area because, you know, even where you particularly tried it, they still will pay it. And and these areas we're talking about, these ones that I tested were Newcastle, Glasgow, ones where people are really adamant they will not pay the prices. And we get it. And, and often when, I'll, when I do talk about pricing and I'll say how much we charge, for instance, and they'll be like, oh, but where are you? And I'll go, oh, we're in Yorkshire. Oh, and they were expecting the southeast or something like that and it's like no Yorkshire you know you can charge more if you know you've got the confidence and the sales skills to do it I think maybe London's a slight exception but um I think the rest of the country everything else costs the same doesn't it (laughs) apart from houses a slight exception. London's a really interesting area. So I've done quite a bit of study into this. And I think London, um, it has, it used to have quite a migrant population. So people would come and go and anyone that came to the UK would pretty much land in London um, because they potentially have more of an illegal population. The first thing they turn to is cleaning. So you've got people undercutting each other all over the place. Um, That being said, there are companies that charge some of the highest in the UK based in London so I I think you're going to get undercut more in London but you're going to get companies that charge more in London so London seems to be just um sort of a more intense version of what's happening everywhere else yeah so it just really it just reflects the rest of the UK but all on its own kind of scenario yeah yeah it makes sense there are plenty of people charging whatever they want in London now do you know what I think would be quite interesting Diane what people should what should people be charging well, it kind of depends, but it depends what they want to base it on. You know, do they want to base it on their competitors or do they want to build a sustainable, profitable business? So, you know, we want them to build a profitable business that's got a long term life, don't we? So for me now, we're looking at £20 an hour plus, I think. Do you know, I remember having this conversation four years ago saying, at some point in the not too distant future, we're going to be charging £20 or more. And people were like, no, I was like, it's going to have to happen. I was looking at the numbers going, it's going to have to happen. I mean, now it's re- you have to be charging £20. I can't believe how fast we've gone from sort of 14, 15 being sort of the norm to now it has to be, it has yeah. to be 18. 20 is like the baseline figure and I remember in 2020 during COVID we had a a, quite a bit of campaigning really where we were like charge your worth and and we were kind of getting trying to get people up to 15 pound an hour at that time weren't we and now certainly in our DCBM membership it's like no 20 plus is the only way now to build a business and actually I, I can't see it being very long before we're talking 25 plus so A thing I hear an awful lot when when I say, look, you've got to charge £20 is people go, I'm not ripping the customer off like that. Like, how do you deal with that one? It's an interesting, I think it's a, 
is this industry, the domestic cleaning industry particularly, attracts a lot of people who are really caring. Um, and the, the challenge with that is wonderful because it means they do a great job for their clients and they look after their pets and they'll do all sorts of little extras. But what it can do is it makes them feel like they don't, they shouldn't be charging more because the client can't afford it. They're more worried about the client than they are about themselves. Do you see that as well, Louise? Is that kind of... Yeah, so the client, the client goes on holiday, on their nice foreign holiday, or but they won't pay more than £12 an hour for a cleaner and the cleaner can't afford to go, quite frankly, to a caravan. Yeah. And so it, it's, yeah, but the cleaner believes that, and the hardest thing is they believe it's their friend, they believe it's doing good, but in the end, all that happens is the cleaner almost gets taken advantage of. Yeah, and we talk, I think we talked about this in a previous podcast. It's like this trap, isn't it, of you know, your clients aren't your friends. It's a, it's a professional relationship. And, yeah, why shouldn't you be able to have a holiday as well? You know, you work hard. It's, it's a really hard job as well. And so, this, is what, absolutely. this is what I see time and time again from cleaners. They are struggling to make ends meet. And it only takes two clients that cancel last minute because they've gone on their nice foreign holidays. And the cleaner's going, I can't pay my bills this week. Yeah. And funnily enough, I was uh, answering a question in one of the forums earlier today and somebody was going from £12 an hour to £15 an hour. So really not expensive. But, you know, £15 an hour is is now pretty cheap in the industry. Um, And their customer was basically saying, I'm not going to pay you £15 an hour because you don't deserve it. And it was like, wow. And it's like, I think there's been a big shift and I I hope that that's going to happen less and less. But that's still happening. And my advice was find yourself a £20 an hour client and walk away with a big smile on your face because, you know, it's it's just not worth it. I find this the easiest question to answer if they say, well, you know, I'm not paying it, I can get cleaner, cheaper. And I'm going, well, if you think about it, minimum wage now is £9.71. Well, I can't get good cleaners on £9.71. So I'm having to pay £11, £12 an hour. Well, you add holiday onto that, 12% of even like say £11 an hour, that's costing me what, £12.50 by the time I played holiday, national insurance. Pension, yeah. And, well, easily £12.50. And then I've got to pay them petrol to get to you. And so that's, let's say I pay £2. Well, that's £13.50. Oh, and by the way, I provide products. Guess what, guys? £15. I'd be better off not cleaning for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, You'd almost be paying them to clean their house. <laughs> yeah. And, and and what we see again and again and again is business owners are having to keep cleaning because they're subsidizing their customers. Because yeah. as a business, the only way the business makes money is if the owner cleans and has the stress of their team. Yeah. So I think if you're a solo cleaner um, and you're happy that at your 15 pounds, you will walk away with less than minimum wage, but you're OK with that or your costs aren't particularly high or you're using the um, clients products or you're walking to jobs so if you are knocking the the cost off so if you walked and used their vacuum and it was purely profit and you worked on your own then yeah you could probably charge 15 pounds yeah but any anybody that's got a team or like you say has got those extra overheads it's it's just not tenable now really is it um to to carry on like that and I, I think for me this is why I want I wanted to talk about pricing today because I think it's fundamental to your whole business and why you're doing it so many people in this industry are working so hard and not making any money they'd be better off working a job for somebody else but if they just charge that bit more and customers will pay it, then they would actually have a really nice, successful business, whether it's them as a solo cleaner or building a team. Yeah, I think what could be hard about this industry, if you look at the reasons people join it, it's often because they are disenfranchised with another industry. It's to leave it, it's to make ends meet, it's to work around their children. And quite often they don't see it as a proper career. So they're not really looking at it properly. That's no, it, it can be seen as a bit of a sideline, can't it? And I think I, I, I've talked to a lot of, of coaching clients where we'll have a conversation and they've kind of 
become an accidental business owner where they started out as a solo cleaner and then they got busy and they hired somebody because they were busy and then they did it again and all of a sudden they've got sort of two or three people working for them they're still out cleaning and they're kind of going what have I done this is you know this is crazy I'm not actually enjoying this anymore and it's because it's all kind of happened by accident with no thought to why you're doing it and the profitability of it which is where the pricing comes in for me okay so how i'm based in manchester how should i pick my pricing down how should you choose your pricing well on the charge if you need to set your hourly rate based on how much profit you want to make it's really as simple as that so you need to know your costs and then you need to decide how much you want to make to make it worthwhile and that's how much you charge and there isn't really any other way of doing it you with I want to make hmm. I mean, I've got to say, I've never really thought about it. I'm going to be a difficult customer for you here. Yeah, I've never really thought about it, Diane. I'd like to make, you know, I just want enough that I've got a nice life and that I can do a holiday once a year. That's, well, this is not true for me, by the way. I want to say you want more. way more than that, don't you? Yeah. Well, there's, there's sort of general principles. If, if we, It depends what you're talking about here. If you're talking about a solo cleaner or if you're talking about somebody who wants to build a team, they're kind of two different formulas, aren't they, really? I would say with a solo cleaner, you want to be making 80% profit on the money that you're earning and your cost should be reduced as low as possible. But if you've got a team, then actually it might be you only make 20% profit. So it's kind of a different formula depending on um, what your scenario is. Your solo cleaner spreadsheet has everything in it, doesn't it? The the one that you provided to the DCBN and that we, we, we offer now as the free resources. That helps people kind of assess all those costs, doesn't that? Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, help me out. What should I be making? What should I be making? <laughs> Well, I'm not really. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you mean in terms of an income? A lot of people have got no idea what to kind of aspire to as an income. Um, and so they don't really know where to start. When, when you say, well, how much money do you want to make? They genuinely don't know. No. And I think sometimes people struggle with the possibilities of their business. And, and often, you know, you, I don't know if you've had this, but often people will say, I want to have 20 staff and I want to have this. And then we'll start saying, well, OK, what does that actually mean in terms of turnover and 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 profit, which is the most important number? And they get a bit scared of the turnover and the profit, even though they're not scared of 20 staff. They so maybe should a- be scared of 20 staff, but they're not. They're, they're, they're more scared of the numbers sometimes. So I've got a quick number for you. If I earn minimum wage of £9.71 and I work 35 hours a week, which would be a nice job, I would earn £1,461 a month. Yeah. So, and and then the employer would have to pay my holiday pay and everything on top of that. So realistically, as cleaners, we need to be walking away, if you think about it, with nearer £2,000 a month. And that's a so. minimum wage yeah. job. I think, you know, I think if you're going to be a solo cleaner working, self-employed, 30, cleaner. Self, you know, self-employed solo cleaner working 30 hours a week, as an example, you want to be earning at least 25000 a year, don't you, doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, is it worth it? So let's have a look. So if I wanted to earn a pretty much the equivalent of my minimum wage job, because the thing with cleaners is we don't get to work just solid hours like you would do in Tesco's just doing a shift. We have to balance it. So if you wanted to work away with £2,000 a month and the reality is you'd probably have to do, what, 30 hours cleaning? Yeah, I would say so. What does that work out at per hour then, Louise? Oh, love it. Well, not £155 I've just worked out there. <laughs> if only. <laughs> you can't find it. 30. Imagine those price objections. £15.50. Yeah. To walk away with minimum wage as a sort of the equivalent self-employed, it's £15.50. Yeah. So really, if you want to make it worthwhile and not actually be better off getting a job, then you've got to charge more. Yeah. And that's minimum. So it's a minimum of £15. Yeah, pounds. Absolutely. Yeah. So how how would you set your hourly rate then? Is it purely based on how much you want to make? So uh, me personally, mm. or what was advice would I give? Do you know it's really hard because when I actually did mine, um you have to kind of look at what you're doing in the business. So we offered uh, higher value, um, higher profit services. So we did offer carpet cleaning, oven cleaning end of tenancy, things like that, that you can make a lot more money on. And if I was going to just work on my own, honestly, I'd just do those. Yeah. Um, 
But we decided to stay with domestic cleaning because as a business, it was far more scalable and you could put more people uh, and grow your team faster. So you've got to decide on your business model. If you decide that your business model is actually that I'm going to have a massive team, then what you're looking at is pricing. I would be looking at competitors. My first step is look at the competitors in your area. And I would be looking at the bigger businesses, so the franchises, the ones. Uh, so for me, I always mention them, Bright and Beautiful. We've got Molly May, Kings May. I mean, we've got loads yeah. around here. I compete against everyone. Looking at them and then either equaling them or potentially looking at being a bit more. I think at the moment we're equal to them. Um, I think I haven't checked them for about six months, nine months. Um, we're about equal. Um, so I'd be competitor checking, but not who you... So if you check someone that's just a small business, that's all you'll ever be. If you want to be the big guys, then you have to be checking out the ones you want to be. So for me, I want to be the big ones. So I'm checking out the ones that have already made it big um, and matching those. I would go higher if I wanted to keep my team small. I would definitely push it. Like I'd be pushing the £30. I'd comfortably charge £30 an hour for domestic cleaning. But because I want to have a bigger team, I stay a little bit under that. So you're looking, you're nearer your 27, 26. So um, that allows me to grow without pricing us out of the market. Yeah. And I think there's, there's always this interesting thing between a, a self-employed solo cleaner and somebody with a team is that often the solo cleaner, the self-employed cleaner thinks that they can't charge as much. And actually, if I was a solo cleaner and it was just me and that's all I wanted to do, I'd be charging £30 an hour without doubt. Because I would deliver the best service ever. If I had a team of no more than five, oh my God, I would love it. You could deliver everything. I could personally make sure I checked every clean and left it. I would check everything. I would give an amazing clean. By the time your team gets massive, it's almost impossible. Like... I shouldn't be saying this, but like it gets you a lot kinda, harder. Yeah, it does. It gets a lot harder. There's a lot more management that has to go into it. But as a solo cleaner, or like you say, with a very small uh, cleaning business, you can deliver amazing service. So why should you be charging £15 an hour when my business is charging 25 Why should you, you're just as good, if not better, at some things? There are some things you won't be able to provide, but on the whole, you can provide a really good service. So there's, I don't like that difference where I can't charge that because I'm not a business. No, I think I think the expectation, I think it's quite interesting as you get bigger, the expectations, you suddenly have to deliver so oh, yes. more. Um, but that as a one man band, you can deliver like it's amazing. You yeah, can. absolutely. Yeah. And that is the challenge as you start to charge more, particularly when you've got a team rather than you delivering the service, is that the expectation from the customer can get higher as the price rises. So, you know, we we, we in fact, we're going to talk in another podcast, aren't we, about um cu- Customer, customer complaints and, and, and expectations and feedback. But yeah, that can be linked to your price sometimes. But maybe they're just not quite getting what's included in the price. And maybe it's not a customer complaint, really. And also, if you're going to charge those prices, you have got to be blinking good. Like yeah. you have got to know your stuff. You've got to study it. You have got to blow. Like if, if someone's charging 15 and you're charging 30, you know, you have got to absolutely blow yeah. everyone else out the yeah. water. Now, could I do it for me? Yes. Could I do it so consistently on a big team? I don't know. Mm. Sometimes, though, is it, you know, we obviously we've done a, a podcast on telephone sales skills, and, and I know we're both firm believers that actually upping your sales skills increases your price because you get better at selling, you can sell at a higher price. And I had an experience this, this week, didn't I, where um, I've actually taken on a cleaner from my home. Um, and um, I did tell them I had a cleaning business, but, you know, um, I, I didn't want them to find out later. But I didn't choose the cheapest one. I chose the one who gave me the most confidence and listened to what I wanted and just kind of gave me the, the right feeling, was the right person and the right fit for me. The other one was, I could tell she was a grafter, but just wasn't quite right and it she was she was cheaper so you know customers don't always choose based on price they don't but the interesting thing is you can be the best salesperson in the world but if you can't deliver the service then <laughs> absolutely yeah know. yeah you've got to be able to sell it then you've got to be able to deliver as well but you've also got to be able to manage those expectations haven't you which is all part of the pricing process as well have you do you ever price per job or is it always an hourly rate so i went through a, a 
two, three years, I changed our entire business model. And the reason I did it was because I was probably a little bit early on. And um, I think we'd just gone back registered. So I sort of needed to sneak a price rise in. Um, So what we did is we were starting to get really good. So the jobs that were taking us three hours were now taking us two and a half. So I kept their price the same. And we said, oh, it's a per job price. So my hourly rate went up, but it was kind of snuck in per job price. Um, that works. There's no doubt about it. It works. And definitely to begin with, uh, I love this idea from a sales point of view. Great idea. It worked for about six months to a year. Um, and then what happened was um, customers aren't stupid. They know what you charge per hour. If you're there for two hours and you charge £40, it's £20 an hour. You know, they as much as we say oh you know sometimes we'll do a bit more we do but sometimes we do a bit less and um, mm. they know what's going on so customers clicked onto it which isn't a massive problem um but the biggest problem i had was that um i would train the staff really well and i would say this is what we need to deliver and they'd go i've done it i've done it and obviously they hadn't done it and a customer would come back and complain and actually it was really really hard from a customer management point of view going okay well they're not expected to do this and they are expected to do that and the girls would go oh you know I didn't know I didn't have time blah 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 I could never put the customer's price up if I'd slightly underquoted I could never push it up because they're like well it's not based on time and So if I made a mistake, which doesn't happen very often, but it does, um, if I made a mistake, I I could never push it up. Whereas if I'd quoted and I said, right, this is the price, it's two hours, 40 pounds, and it took us three, I can say, well, that's 60. Whereas if I said, this is the all-in price, here you go, it's 40 pounds, and actually I'd underquoted, I was just stuck. Yeah, you can't you can't kind of come back from it, can you? I've we we've never gone for regular work. We've never gone down the per job rate for that exact same reason because we have a, a you know if the client has booked three hours, they get three hours. So if you finished, you do extras. You can do some windows. You can clean inside the fridge. There's always there's always more housework to do, isn't there? It, it's kind of never ending. But yeah, so I, I've always but but for one off jobs, we we always quote per job. We never quote by the hour for those. And and staff would go, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. You know, because they make and and then do you pay the staff per hour they do uh, or do you pay them for an all in job rate? And then really, it's in, if you look at how it um, persuades staff, they're then if they're paid an all in job rate, then they are better off getting it done in an hour and a half instead of two hours. So they're way better off doing that. So what do you motivate your them, staff to do? Yeah, encourages them to cut corners, I think. Um, so I, I'm sure it can work, um, but I'm not sure it can work on a big scale um, because of the management that you'd have to put in place to make sure that the standards were still being met. Yeah, and if they weren't, what happens? Do you send them back at their cost or at your cost? or mm. it? What I found, the other thing that I found was if you look at it from an accounts point of view and a planning point of view, if you know your staff, you've got a job book for two hours, you know, the staff are going to be there for two hours. That works really, really well. You know exactly, you predict what's coming in, you can predict what's going out. If it's just a job rate, you don't really know how long it's going to take. You don't really know if your staff are going to choose to do it properly for the two hours or do it in an hour and a half. How do you plan the rest of the day? Um and then the other problem is, let's say the staff cut it short because they mostly cut it short, and not extend it. Um, and they're finishing at like two o'clock instead of their expected five. Then they're not making the money they wanted to make. But well, they're only going to stay with you so long. You're not providing the hours. And you go, I am. You've got the hours. You're just choosing not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a real minefield. So no, it's definitely one we've avoided. I say we do, we do price by the job for one off. So I would never tell a client for a one off clean that it's going to take X number of hours. It would always be this is the price um, regardless because there's always some leeway in there, isn't there, with one offs. Um, so what sort of price objections do you come across then, Louise? <laughs> it's the tone in which they do it. <laughs> me <laughs> how much <laughs> <What? laughs> well that's more than everyone else yes it is yeah um, why are you more expensive than everybody else yeah. they tend to come out quite so blatantly I get more it's the tone in which they go what, what? like yes. yes and you sort of go <laughs> like it's the way you're supposed to respond of 
I don't know why you're shocked. And I'm like, oh, like, here we go again. Yeah, yeah, you've got to act like, well, what's the problem? Yeah, this is how much it is. Yeah. Why are you surprised? And I'm like, oh, you shouldn't be surprised because, you know, it's not that much. And obviously you can answer it really well. But sometimes the tone in which they do it does frustrate me. I'm like, oh, come on, what's wrong with you? How much do you earn? You know, I feel like saying yeah. that. Actually, oh. that com- that's often a price objection, isn't it? I don't get paid that much. Yeah, good job. Do you want to come and work? <laughs> Is that my problem? I don't get paid much as the, as you know as as a brain surgeon, but that doesn't mean that you know the brain surgeon is worth any more than me. It's like not how it works, is it? Yeah, it's um. So yeah, they do go, and in all honesty, so I, I a lot of people don't agree with what I do, but I publish our prices on the website, so. Um, I have like a, an expected price. So I, I've i got a range. So I know a three bedroom house is going to be between X and Y. So I know it's going to take a three bedroom house. It's probably going to take me two to three hours. So I'll give them a price for two hours and I'll give them a price for three hours. And they'll be somewhere in the middle. Um, so they know that the minimum they're going to get away with is the two hours, which at the moment's 52.80, um, up to 79.60, I think. Um, and if they if they come back to me and they say I thought it was going to be fifty two and I'm going well everything you've asked for is going to be seventy nine what would you like me to take off to make it fifty two and and I can negotiate from there but I don't want people that are expecting thirty pounds I'm so far off that yeah. so I just publish it yeah you know. no it's it's and if you if you're so busy it's not it's not a bad move um I suppose that the challenge is with people want business and they want people to pick up the phone and maybe they need the practice as well of the selling skills then um, maybe publishing your price isn't always the best way to go <laughs> no, it, it definitely reduces our inquiries yeah I, I'd happily take if I can get down from 25 down to 12 inquiries a day I'll take that you know, 12 suits me just fine, yeah. but 12 that will pay my prices. So Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so how often do you increase your prices then? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really hard one, isn't it? Uh, how often do I increase it? Um, there isn't a set time scale as to when to increase it. So we last put ours up during COVID because we couldn't recruit for love nor money. Mm. So what we said is, you know, we got half the team we had. So we whacked them right up. We lost loads of customers, but they were pouring in. And so we put them in then. Right now, we're probably, that was like a year, 18 months ago. Obviously, inflation's going up. There are price rises all over the place. Um, It's a really hard time right now because... I should put my prices up now, okay, but I'm sort of looking at it going, our prices are already reasonable. I'm not upset with the profit we're making. I'm okay. Do I think we could push higher? Yes. But we've had three or four cancellations due to customers feeling the pinch of um, electricity and things. So at the moment, I've got to say, I'm holding fire. I'm going to wait six months, see what's kind of happening to the economy, because I'm expecting, like, I think the next six months are going to be quite interesting. So for now, I'm holding. Yeah, um, and I think October with the fuel increases and everything coming into full force, then, yeah, it could be yeah, it could be a time. But also what we do, what we do is we put prices up for new customers first. Oh yeah, always. So if we're gonna, if we're gonna think, if we're even thinking about a price rise, we're like, well, okay. First thing we do, every new customer from now on is this price, and we just test the market. And if we're still getting new customers, then it it gives you that confidence, then doesn't it? So right, okay, look, look. And I know we did a webinar on this, didn't we? About sort of breaking your clients down into categories and your A, Bs, and Cs, and then start with your Cs. Put their price up first because you don't mind if you lose them. And I know what we did last year, and it was didn't like doing it, but we again, like you, we could not recruit for love nor money. It's it is much better at the moment, thank goodness. But last year we could not recruit. And so what we did is we got rid of all our two-hour fortnightly clients. We had quite a lot of them, and we just got rid of the, all of them because they were our least profitable clients. So even if we'd put their price up, it would they would still been have been our least profitable. So we just had to say to them, look, we can't provide service to you. A lot of them are keep asking if they can come back yet. And we're still like, no, you, not yet. Do you know what's interesting? Like, we got absolutely battered during COVID, uh, but we ended the year making more money than we did the previous one. Um, 
not not because of government help at all. We're talking a year after actually having furlough. Um, because actually you can, if you get your pricing right, you can have a smaller team and actually make the same because the profit margins are so small, you only have to put prices up a little bit to yeah. make the same profit margin. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's an important thing to remember, isn't it? Whether you're building a business with a team is you can have less customers and make more money. And also, if you're a solo cleaner, you could be working 25 hours a week instead of the 35 you're doing now and make the same money. Who doesn't want to have Fridays off? You know, there, there's, there's ways of making this more of a lifestyle business as well, isn't there? You have Mondays off, don't you, Louise? Do you have Mondays off? <laughs> Long weekend. To be honest, I look a bit rough today because I've been hiking and camping for three days. So I'm sunburnt, my lips are chapped. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh it doesn't it doesn't show on the camera. We're not from here anyway. I so. know I kind of blurred it a bit. So um, brilliant. So what, what's, your, what's your final message about pricing then? Because I think we've kind of discussed most of the things that come up as topics. Um I would get as much information as you can. So I would look at all the competitors. I would do the sum. So know what your costs are, add all your costs onto minimum wage. And then I think really you sh- as a business aiming for 30% gross profit. Yeah. No, I um, think that, that's good advice. Yeah. That's what I would be aiming for. So, you know, if you don't know what to do, just go with the, the industry stats. Um, yeah. As a self-employed cleaner, it depends how confident you are in your services, quite frankly. Um, yeah. And what you offer, you know, I wouldn't be charging £15 an hour for deep cleans. I would be charging, and so I wouldn't rule out your set day rates. I would be charging £200 a day, and I'll come and do what you want. I will be your skivvy for a day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think day rates is a really, really good way, especially especially for solo cleaners, actually. It's a really good way of making a really good living out of cleaning is by charging by the day. Other trades charge by the day. Why don't cleaners? And, um, and also, you're 200 pounds a day. You're not going to do eight hours because you'll be yeah. exhausted. So you're going to do yeah. six hours. And um, yeah, so my advice is think it through, be confident. We've given so much just in this podcast. You know, if you listen to this, um, hopefully you'll have a bit of an idea as to what will work for you. I think it's lovely in this industry because there is the full range. My concern is that I think cleaners are taken advantage of. Yeah, I completely agree. And it it goes back to what I said about they often come with a very caring nature into this industry. And and that's ripe for being taken advantage of. So that's something to be aware of. My advice would be if you haven't already, download the Solar Cleaner spreadsheet from the DCBN free resources, um, because that will really help you look at your costs, because I do believe that that's where your starting point for pricing is. And the other thing is, have confidence brush up on your sales skills and have confidence in your service and then actually you can pretty much charge whatever you want especially right now where demand is still pretty high um i know you said you'd had some some clients back off but we certainly have we've not seen any drop in demand yet so um yeah go for it while while you can i suppose and i think the other thing is if you want to put your prices up we've done I think two or three amazing videos actually going it's not like the podcast where we just kind of ramble and talk around we actually go boom boom tell you how to do it how you do it Um, so these are just fun I like to have a chat about it I don't want to write a whole lesson on it for every podcast but we do (laughs) we do the actual we do on our webinars yeah absolutely brilliant well thanks Louise and um, if you like the podcast then please follow us and feel free to share um, and um, we'll a new one comes out every week so thank you very much See you soon.